<laughs> yeah, what is this? <laughs> why, why are these fans riding horses? Hold your head up! Hold your head up! Their mental mistakes are just killing me right now, even though it's 2012, the game is gone, and I'm I'm even supporting Olympiakos right now on tape delay, and I was supporting them 11 years ago. Donatas, did you choose this game to trigger Oritas, <laughs> knowing that he will get triggered This is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> What's that all about? What, what? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Basket News Retro, a new little project we started here on our YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be here with two co-hosts of Urbonus podcast, Ritas and Donatas. And in this show, we are going to watch some historical EuroLeague games. Not necessarily EuroLeague, uh, it can be from European Championships or from World Cups. Olympics, yeah. NBA maybe. A any sort of historical games that everyone should watch but haven't seen or have seen and need to remember about him. Every month, one of us will choose a game and this month's game is chosen by Donatas who chose the Olympiakos and CSKA final from 2012. So Donatas, why did you choose this game in particular? It was easy choice, Gitis, uh, because it was the biggest upset in the EuroLeague Finals history, the largest comeback in the EuroLeague Finals history. Ceska literally had champagne ready in their locker, locker room seconds uh, before the final whistle of the game. And of course, Yorgos Pintes is hit the most iconic EuroLeague shot, uh, I would say, and stole the show with Olympiakos. It's important that I have both of you guys because you're way older than me. Uh, you're basically elderly people compared to me. Both of you were already adults seeing this game. And uh, Ritz, I don't know, how old were you? 19, 20 at that point? When this game 22, uh, I was a student uh, and actually uh, before this final four, my brother made a bet on Olympiakos to win w win the EuroLeague and I said to him, you're crazy, why Why you're burning your own money? Yeah, so I think let's not wait and let's jump into 2012 and watch the game. You were there as a promising <laughs> young Lithuanian journalist. I right? was 19 and I, I had no clue what I were doing there actually. So Sky were clear favorites to, to win it all. They entered the final four winning 18 of 20 games for instance i remember the olympiakos even in the regular season they were struggling they were like six and four in the top 16 they were three and three and they played a do or die game against galatasaray andre kirilenko was i'm not gonna say still in his prime but he was still very good still nba material and he, he just decided to play in moscow and to grab a euroleague title and he didn't do it, actually. I think it was a lockout year. Yeah, yeah that's the craziest part And that's of this. a huge part of this whole season. Yeah, yeah. And he signed for a huge money, actually. Uh, I think it was a three-year, $12 million deal with NBA uh, exit clause. And Nenad Kirstich also joined Seska on two-year, $8.8 .8 million contract. That's crazy. And Kirstich was in his prime. He was like 28. And he had some decent seasons in the NBA. I mean, he was like averaging nine points, five rebounds. Back that, in the day, that, it was, that, it was, that was cool. That was for the Thunder, right? That yeah, took 2011 kind of years. Yeah. I remember now, I thought about the whole timeline, 2011 NBA champs uh, unexpectedly, Dallas Mavericks, right? Then 2011, we got the Eurobasket in Lithuania, also a big event, also mm. a bunch of stars. Then the lockout happens, bunch of stars come to EuroLeague yeah. to play, yeah. and then this crazy final happens. So yeah. thinking about like the context of the timeline, how everything happened in the span of like what one year basically mm -hmm. from 2011 to now 2012 when is it uh may it happens yeah it's crazy it's a crazy year but there it is Kyle Hines Antich. Antich also was a big rise not rising star but he became known after the 2011 Eurobasket didn't he or was he not playing sure. well he before? was known before but I never really liked Perantic because to me it looked like he's a very big body and he's very physical but he always wanted to be a stretch four and, and he was shooting like 28% from downtown but obviously coaches wanted him for his toughness and physicality. He later had a contract with Atlanta Hawks which, yeah, yeah, which yeah. looked kind of random to me actually. Mm. I mean this roster is honestly nothing special other than, than Spanulis and Printes is you don't have star power or, or anything. Lucas was only 22, 23. One player stands out to me from this Olympiakos team that I thought is going to have a very successful European career because he, he was a good shooter. Marco Keshali. Mm. After these titles with Olympiakos, he never really made it. 
Evangelis, Manzaris. Yeah, Manzaris in starting five. Interesting. I, I don't remember. Kesheli and Manzaris. These are the guys who beat Seska. <laughs> okay, Milos, Milos doesn't, look doesn't look horrible. any different. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, hasn't it? Oh, Lithuanian legend. Baltic Pippin. <laughs> That's just, yeah. And look at their starting five. I mean, the size of the team. Kirlenko playing as a power forward, Kirsic center, Krapa, small forward, mm. Chishkauskas shooting guard. What I mean, about what about these intros poster. though? Uh, saying your name and where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, Monica. Luigi La Monica. Do you know the other two? I don't uh, know the other speaking two. No. I do know, but that's the thing. Usually referees are not too memorable. Except for Luigi, Unless you're La Monica. Well, yeah. you have like Luigi La Monica in basketball, you have Pierluigi Colina in football, but honestly, when a referee retires, you don't even notice it. Notice. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. It's it's the thing. Like the best referee is the one you don't talk about. <laughs> yeah, what is this? <laughs> why, why are these fans riding horse? What is this? Is what kind I think of a team? Horse I think donkey. their mascot is Con Agon, <sighs> which is which what? is a donkey. Oh, it's a donkey. Dorsey. Didn't he try himself as a porn star after his basketball career? Was there <laughs> really? some, some kind of a story? Star? Okay, there I was know a that. story or something like that. This is a good topic to start the basketball <laughs> game. 10 <laughs> 7. That's the score of the first Decent. quarter. Right, the best final ever, you said, right? <laughs> <laughs> It was that close to become from one of the best, okay, best final ever in the early history to one of the ugliest finals, actually. This haircut also must be addressed, I think. So, I think all of the <laughs> Russian haircuts should be addressed. Oh, look at that guy. Oh. I think I, these are Zalgir's dancers. Because I just, look, wait for one move. You remember a specific... I don't really remember <laughs> moves from this one, Jalgir. This one. I just remember the sound of these chairs in Jalgir Arena. I, I understand Olympiakos and their field goal percentage and everything. That's an open look, yeah. But Ceska, with these players, they should be doing some serious ass-whooping. Mm. And they actually barely won the semi-final against Panathinaikos, if you remember. Both teams played each other twice, and the last game happened three months before the final game. Seska won by 32 points. Was it the and it doesn't top help 16? in the long run? No, it was group. It was top 16, actually. Okay. Yeah, they won 96, 64. Look, look, oh, look, I, I just again. have to say this: Why, why is Panulis guarding Teodosic and AC Law is guarding Jamon Gordon? Why are you putting your best offensive player with the defensive duties on their best offensive player, best point guard in the league? While you have a role player, Jamon Gordon, standing in a corner with a physical guard like AC Law. Now it's good. Now it's oh a good no, matchup. He's hot. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's just three in a row. Yeah. Brate moi. So Milos has 11 points, and Olympiago's entire team has 13. <laughs> That's crazy. Nice. And actually, that was the reason why Duda Ivkovic was so mad uh, in the locker room at the halftime. Because uh, what was also interesting that. The walls between both locker rooms were really thin, so Ceska players actually heard how Ivkovic was blasting Vasilis Panulis. Like the that's bullshit. The way you play, what what kind of leader you, leader you are, and it was really really tense uh, locker room speech. But yeah, Gatsachus is actually uh, getting a free championship there as well. He, he was a two-time Euroleague champ, yeah. and he never logged the minutes in the final four. I was a bit an uh, overrated the uh, reaction from from the Olympiakos when they signed him after the. He Rita was actually season. doing uh, okay I mean, during the regular season. He was averaging around eight points, which was solid. Listen, even these days, teams need three point specialists. Yeah. So you have one on your roster. He will help you in some games, maybe mm. in the regular season. Uh, of course, in the final four, he doesn't play because of his defense. Uh, it would be too easy for Saskat to expose his. Uh, defensive problems and as this guy is a very big physical team you cannot afford to have a weaker player on the court oh it's Alexi Shved, Shved. I think it, it was too late it, I think no, it didn't I th count I think he got it off I, I think it didn't count we'll see I think he got it off did they have video reviews in 2012? <laughs> they that's must a do for good this. question they must do for this though, I for actually doubt it hey we don't get okay, a replay we don't get <laughs> in 2012 <laughs> the EuroLeague broadcast were 
so high end that you couldn't even get a replay of a buzzer beater. Nice. So we don't know if the okay. Let's let's go <laughs> let's go to third quarter where it begins, so we'll know the score at least whether it counted or it didn't. Spanulis and Papa Nicolau scored 18 points. The rest of the crew. Oh shit! Two. Yeah, two points. Oh, two so points. it didn't count. So not as you were right. It didn't count. It was too but late. We don't know if it's, we, we didn't if know. it's the right decision or not. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> now I, I I will not be able to sleep at night. <laughs> Wondering oh. if the shot counted, what could have happened? <laughs> they had a great team in North Macedonia at the time with Pero Antic playing pick and rolls as a point guard. Oh my God, Spanulis lost his concentration on defense. He didn't hear what Duda was screaming in the locker room, mm. did he? <laughs> Still attacking him. He was basically. closing Alexi Schwed's left hand because he thought he has a shooting sleeve on his left, so he's <laughs> probably left handed, but he's not. Papa yeah. Nicolau. That's a crazy start comparing to the first half, Whoa. to be honest. What yeah. is it, four field goals in a row? I feel it's like watching, watching NBA regular season. Kyle Hines. He looks like a point guard in terms of size in this game. He also looks the same as he <laughs> does right now, actually. I mean, age-wise, I, I do. I do agree with that, but I'm I'm just saying that on the court you have so many big mm. bodies. Mm. Kyle Hines looks like a point guard. Just very uh, the, a point guard who likes to go to the gym. I say a lot. <laughs> For sure. There's a fast break. Okay, so we now we have nine point lead and nineteen, was 19, point, 19 point, point, lead. point lead. Point lead. Sorry. Two minutes left to the third quarter. Crazy. Breaking point of the game. I've heard there's gonna be a comeback, so seeing <laughs> 19 point down in third quarter is pretty crazy. Knowing how low scoring this game was as well, you know? And now there are a lot of stories in Greece about what Ivkovic did. During uh, this timeout? Or, what, uh, or when? Yeah, because now he will put the five with Slukas, Manzaris, Keshel. Uh, somebody the four and Kyle Hines, if, I think. And there was a moment. There are two uh, stories. Let's say uh, first of all, four, right? Yeah, Princesses. Maybe that was the way how Ivkovic tried to change the momentum of the game, putting you know, benching all his main players, most of the main players, and to try to bring some fresh, uh, fresh blood into. Uh, to make to make the game a bit more unpredictable, but also the, there's another theory, uh, more realistic, that actually he was already saving his main players for the I don't remember whether it were Greek League finals uh, after the final four or the playoffs, and just he just wanted to keep the, his main players uh, not only fresh but healthy uh, to finish the season winning uh, the G Greek League. And there's also a theory that maybe he tried to save the image of Spanulis and some, some other stars of the team, you know, facing this blowout loss. You're right about that. He's on the run. What a pass. Slukas lo looks like 18 year old kid. And Slukas was never really uh, considered a, yeah. a, a star player yeah. before he signed uh, with Fenerbahce. And only in Fenerbahce years he became like a star of the show. Mm -hmm. I think he had his uh, halftime cigarette, so he can't make the shot anymore. <laughs> but this was not a bad decision. The clock was running out, and there it is. Okay. Vangelos Manzaris. That was a key shot before the fourth quarter. I mean, down to thir what is it? Minus 13, one quarter. That doesn't seem impossible. When you looked at minus 19, it was a bit different. When you and, score and 40 points these, uh, these in three quarters. Last second shots closing the quarter are big momentum changers, usually. So let's see if Tesco will have a nice offensive possession because so far they haven't. Mm. Oh, it's a carry. Only Luigi, Honestly, uh, only Luigi Lamonico can call a carry on Teodosic. I'm going to say that much. Okay. Perhaps. Fair enough. It was not even that obvious. No, in NBA no. it's happening every day right now. So You don't need NBA. I think in EuroLeague there are plenty of players yeah. who carry the ball a little bit. But Tesco right now, they're running their offense... Hold your head up! Hold your head up! The dude closed the third quarter with a free. Oh, it's Keshele. Even worse, he's a he's a shooter. I would just feed Kristic in the post against Heinz. They would double what, him. What, 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 why is he what taking the shot? I, I don't possessions. get it. What are they doing? That's when they, Teodosic lost his mind. They're either quarter. running the clock or taking ill-advised shots. 
I'm actually taking it back. I think Teodosic didn't have his halftime cigarette. That's why he's playing that bad. <laughs> Just that's why, why he's so nervous. Why are we passing from this side? It, it it should be so easy. Just give it to Kristic in the post. And if they double, he reacts. If he, if they don't double, he can beat Kyle Heinz. It feels like I'm listening to Jonas Kozlowskis and I'm Yanis Feropoulos on the bench. <laughs> I just don't get it. What 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 are they doing? Their mental mistakes are just killing me right now. Even <laughs> though it's 2012, the game is gone, and I'm I'm even supporting Olympiakos right now on tape delay, and I was supporting them 11 years ago. But it's just. Donatus, did you choose this game to trigger Oritas, <laughs> knowing that he will get triggered by the? That's also one of the unofficial decision. reasons. Ooh, nice. nice. Oh my oh, gosh. Jesus. One defensive player. It was to like the that other. creature from Warcraft. Oh, yeah, like a dragon that yeah. just came out of a cave. Oh my gosh. It's an open Shishka look. Shishka misses the open look. You will always be tempted to take a shot like this, although it's the six second. That was a good of, shot. Of the shot. Yeah, but you're up by seven. It's a EuroLeague final, five minutes left. He was okay. Huge. Huge. But Big balls. But now they were rotating. There was effort. I'm not gonna shout. <laughs> Jonas Kozlowski has no bad comments about this. I'm not gonna shout this. at the screen about this defense. Okay. It, nope. Just not a proper screen. And he's stuck. Oh my is, god. Is still Dosic to blame for this? A little bit. Honest. I think he, he should take some responsibility as a leader of the team for his bad decisions. In the fourth quarter, he scored one point. He missed all three shots. I think he made four turnovers. He made zero assists. Kirilenko knew what was coming. It was a decent closeout. It's just that hard to contest Papa Nicolaou shooting freeze. What's funny that Spanulis went scoreless in the fourth quarter and he still got the MVP. That was the crime of MVP voting back in the day because I think that journalists had to make their votes before the fourth quarter. This guy is just giving it away. 21 turnovers. Okay, so I remember there being score 53-34. Yeah. Yep. So the run is 24-7. to What seven. is this? It's Milos Tadosic. <laughs> 12 seconds on the clock. Maybe he was calculating 2-4-1. Uh, wow, Warren Savage. Big block. Huge stop. Who is running there? Where? Security guards, whatever. Maybe uh, it's you. <laughs> no? <laughs> nah. Come on, man. <laughs> Sit your ass down. <laughs> what is going on there with the guys down? Also, it's only 20 seconds left. Yeah. They're up by two and Teodosic is shooting free throws. Look what happens. Oh, no. You're right. You're right. You were right. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Good Ooh, foul. That's a very good foul. Good foul. 72%. Wow, okay. Slash season 64. Wow. I'm just going to repeat myself. Big balls on this guy. Look at his shorts. I mean, that's why they were so long. <laughs> Dad jokes. <laughs> there you go. Olympiakos owners. Oh, and Deron Williams is also there. Another important timeout. Uh, we all remember well, very well who will shoot the free throws mm -hmm. uh, in the follow-up possession. And the plan was to, to put the ball in Teodosic's hands. And the problem was that during this timeout, Teodosic refused to take the inbound pass. He didn't want to shoot free throws. Oh, I so don't know. Maybe it was it to the coach. Yeah, that I'm I don't not know if do it, it was related uh, to the fact that he missed one before, but he didn't want to take the inbound ball. That's why they actually had to uh, bring Ramona Shishkovskas on the court to to receive the ball and, and to that's shoot where, free throws. Where you get your flashbacks. The year was 2000. Oh yeah, in Sydney. I not was many people old. know it. You were not, three years old. Not many three people know old. it. Yeah. Three years old, right? I was. Anyway. I was ten. He missed both th free throws there, right? Against and Team USA. Yeah. Not both. Just one? Three. Yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot. And Latwin was, like, up by two against I, Team I USA. I don't remember the, the score and line. And it was probably the last minute of the game. But we were really close yeah. to winning it and making it to the final and probably winning the Olympic gold medal. Yeah. Okay, let's watch now 2012. 
very important. 2012. I'm very just important. saying there's some uh, background and some history behind Ramona Shishkowska's yeah. taking important free throws. Is he a good free throw shooter in general? I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. He was decent. His numbers weren't that great. I think his career free throw shooting percentage was maybe 77. No, that, that's that's good. That's that's decent. 77. It's, it's not like none of the quality is shooting free Seems throws. Seems like you've done your research. It's 77.2. Yeah, I just have nice memory. <laughs> and did you notice how the ball went out? I mean, it was almost in and out. Some nervy, the second one, nervy the second one. release, I would say. Yeah, for a, for a guy named Ramunas, if you're Lithuanian, you understand the joke. Okay, last possession. Oh, shit. And you know, Kirilenko is in such a bad position here because if he doesn't go to help from Printesis, Spanulis drives to the rim and, and finishes with a layup. Yeah, yeah. So you must. Oh. Still Hell Mary nothing. feel goosebumps. Crazy. Look. What an ending. Emotions. Is it the first time in the game they, they had a lead? Or they were leading 5-2? Yeah, yeah, in, in, in the, the beginning. beginning. They were leading 5-2 in, in the first quarter. And You're right. So You're Ceska right. basically was leading the game for 30... Nine minutes or so, or yeah. Seven minutes. The big story about that shot is that when Kozlaskas was the head coach of Olympiakos, he forbid Printesis to make those shots because right. he he thought that they are inefficient. And Printesis was waiting for the practice to finish to make extra shots in his spare time, let's say. And these shots are inefficient for any <laughs> other player, but sometimes you must understand that there are unique players with some unique qualities, and this is something he can do. There's also a big speculation that uh, Printes has received a contract offer from CSKA following this uh, Final Four. And it was like a few times bigger contract than Olympiakos uh, offered him. But he just he just said that. I mean, Watch it again. Look, he's going to his left. Teodosic doesn't really help at all. And Skrilenko must And that was Duda's plan. He wanted to attack... Kerlenko actually because as a help as we saw that Heinz block he was great in, in helps so yeah, he just wanted to attack, attack him and that so was also the idea if, of Ivkovic if, if AK-47 wasn't there underneath the basket uh, then Spanulis would have finished yeah, he with goes, the left hand he, he, he goes for the layup for sure so this is it guys yeah that was crazy crazy game although we knew what's gonna happen it's still it, it's crazy to watch that this actually happened. Just because I didn't remember some particular moments like Hrapa not raising his arm hmm. or Gordon going on a strong side help in a stupid situation. These what, moments. What, what was the most shocking for you, Gitas? Because you, you had to be fair, I, said, I said it before. It's Papa Nicolau playing, first of all, and second of all, mm -hmm. playing this well. And really changing the game in many situations with making big shots, big shots, mm -hmm. and being this young, you know. Just Milos also surprised me with how bad he can be in the in the final quarter. I actually did not expect because I didn't see, I don't remember much of it. But the the final quarter for Milos Tadosh was definitely one of the worst, like for performances in the finals i think that's the thing with milos his highlights are so high but his low lights are so low and in the end he doesn't have as many titles as he should have thank you guys for watching let us know in the comments which game we should watch next and we'll be back next month with another game to watch on basket retro also like subscribe and i'll see you next time